I now have nine frames, both in photo P and in Photoshop that are lined up so they feel like they animate, like a flip book. They're all cropped and lined up together. I can test them with the eyeballs. I want to make sure these are saved. So that's saved as my animatic. To make sure it's saved in the right place. This one is Photoshop as a PSD. Replace the existing one. Yep, so it's updated. There we go. And then my Photo P1, I'm going to save it. File save as a PSD. It's going to go to the desktop or I could put it right into the right thing. Say save and it's going to replace. And then I can remove the old one from the desktop. So just always know how you're saving things and where you're saving things. That matters. Okay, now we're going to see the very different ways that we animate them. So first I'm going to show you within Photoshop. Now that we have all the layers set up as our frames, this is considered a stage file because each of these is considered a final animation frame. So how do we animate it? We go to Window and we go to the Timeline view. All of these windows, these are different tool viewing screens we can see. And you can see the ones with the checks this is all for the Essentials default workspace that we see color, we see layers, and we see properties. Properties is very helpful when we do vector shapes. Layers is incredibly helpful with compositing. You always want to see layers. Color will be helpful when we do things like digital coloring and digital painting. So the Essentials default workspace is usually what I start with, but we're going to add to that the timeline. So you click on timeline, and at the bottom you'll see a new window. It says create video timeline. We don't want to create a video. We want to create an animation. So we're going to create, click on that drop down and say create frame animation. And then click on it. And it will show us our first frame at zero seconds. Now we go to the window options, which are always in the upper right hand corner of each window. And we're going to choose the option make frames from the layers. So that turns each of our layers into a separate animation frame. But it does it from the bottom up. So first it's the our frame 9, then frame 8, then 7, then 6, then 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So we can also use those window options to reverse that by holding down shift and selecting all of them then using the window options and say reverse frames. And now it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all lined up with the eyeball for each layer. So notice as I click on a, a frame in the timeline, the eyeball for only one layer will show up. The next one, the eyeball, next one. So all the timeline does, it's actually incredibly simple. All it does is program the eyeball <laughs> and what's turned on and what's off. We can also have it program the opacity of the layers and the layer effects, but that's for finishing things off. So right now they're, they're all programmed at zero seconds. So if I press play, nothing should happen because it's zero seconds. But Photoshop knows that you don't really want zero seconds, so I'll just play it through really quickly. And that's a little bit hard to see what's going on. So we're going to select all of them by holding down shift, all of the frames, and we're going to click on one of them with the drop down menu next to the timing. And we're going to say other because my favorite default timing for an animatic 
is 0.3 seconds. That means it's close to three frames per second. Professional animation is 24 frames per second. So now when we play it through, it will give you the sense of movement and it will kind of show you what's happening. And when it jumps and it's unclear, that's a problem with your frame, not a problem with the animation. All right, now to save this, I'm gonna hit stop. I go to file, and of course I just hit save to save it as my Photoshop file. And now the Photoshop file will have this timeline program built into it. But to save it as a GIF, I have to go to file, export, then save for web legacy. Now, why all those steps? Because GIF is an outdated format. It's used exclusively now for the internet because it's, it's the only kind of animated video file that plays automatically when opened on a web browser. So we're gonna click on Save for Web Legacy. It will bring up our, our GIF options and it will remind us what a GIF file is. So these are all the default presets. It's a GIF, it's picking its colors through a, a, an algorithm called selective color choice, but you're limited to no more than 256 colors if it's a GIF file. So that's a major way that it reduces the quality and the size. So you can see all these variations of green and all these variations of black and white and gray, right? Because this is just a very simple animation, not a lot of color here yet. And we can preview it. And if it all looks good, we can say save. And it's going to save it with the same name as your Photoshop file, but it's going to put GIF at the end. And it's more importantly than just being a GIF format, which means it's limited to no more than 256 colors. This will now have the animation script in it that plays through your frames. So I'm gonna save that to the desktop, you know, Command D to go to the desktop as a GIF. This is my Photoshop version GIF. I hit save and go to my desktop and it will appear there. There it is. To test it, I can right click and say open with any web browser. For whatever reason, I tend to use Safari for this. So I feel bad for Safari. I wanna use it for something. I don't think I've opened Safari on this computer since it updated operating systems, so that might take longer than I want. So let's force quit Safari and just view it through Chrome. Open with Chrome. There it is. You can see it play through. Now notice in Photoshop when you play it, its timing might be a little different. Notice that's a little bit slower in Photoshop than it is when it's actually finished and playing. That's because Photoshop has a little bit of a processing delay. But when you save it as a, as a GIF and you play it, this is showing it at one third of a second. A little bit, little bit slower, I think, or faster, 0.3. A little bit faster than one third of a second. Three frames per second. So to get through nine frames, that takes three seconds. So we know that works. Let's save that. So I will move that GIF file made from Photoshop into my assignment folder. And now let's do the same thing with PhotoP. PhotoP does not have a timeline window. If you go to window, there's no timeline there. Instead, what we have to do is make a folder and then save each of these individually as individual JPEGs. So I'm gonna save layer one, file, 
export as JPEG. And I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna keep all the defaults. Goes to downloads, there it is. It's a little labor intensive. So I'll have my downloads open here. And I'm gonna rename it. So this is saving it as a JPEG from Photopea. I had to rename it as frame one. Otherwise the next frame, I turn off frame one, I do frame two and I say file export as JPEG. It's gonna overwrite the first one because it goes into downloads. So each time I have to change its name. So this will be framed. And then same thing with frame three. Export as JPEG. You'll see it in your downloads. Once it comes in, you're gonna rename it. And then frame four. So because PhotoP does not have its own timeline and that, that external web tool we're going to use is called gifmaker.me, I think. And it's linked in the assignment. But first we have to have a stack of JPEGs of our finished animation frames. And extend this a little bit so it stacks like our storyboard. Frame more than halfway done now. Sport frame six. So understand the difference between layers and frames. Frames are what you see for a limited amount of time that you program in an animation. With an animatic, with an animatic, one layer becomes one frame, both in Photoshop and the way we're doing it through PhotoP. Most of the time, you can take the demos that I do in class, and you can match those demos directly with PhotoP at home, even if I'm working in Photoshop. But with animation, there are these differences. And you have to be adaptable as a digital artist. And sometimes you have to work around, find solutions with alternative programs. All right, frame nine. So all of this is pretty technical. It's about lining it up. It's about knowing where your, your sources are. And now, we're gonna move all of those frames into a folder. So we downloaded all those frames. I'm gonna to go to my assignment folder. This is what we would call a stage. And I'm going to move all of those frames onto the stage. I can arrange them by name. So there we go. That's almost exactly our storyboard, right? Now, since I can't animate it within PhotoP, the site we use is called GIF Maker, and it's linked within the assignment instructions, gifmaker.me. There are a few GIF generators. This one's just the most direct I've found. Just gives you basic controls without a lot of nonsense and it won't leave a watermark on it. So what we do, we simply upload our images and we can use command if we're on a, a Mac or control if we're on a PC to select multiple images. So I'm just gonna go to the desktop, open up my digital art folder open up assignment four that I've been working on, or assignment three rather, that I've been working on. It's my fourth folder. Open up my stage. 
and open up all these frames, which are already in order. And they're going to be imported in just like we are uploading.